This is the Good Neighbor Podcast, the place where local businesses and neighbors come together. Here's your host, Mike Sedita. Hello, and welcome to the Good Neighbor Podcast. I am your host, Mike Sedita. Today, we are joined by Tom McNish. He is the district manager for your green team. Tom, how are you doing today? Doing great, Mike. How are you? I'm doing excellent. Thanks for coming on the Good Neighbor Podcast with us today. Um, just so you know what the Good Neighbor Podcast is, we basically started the Good Neighbor Podcast during COVID back in 2020 as a way for business owners and local entrepreneurs and charity groups to get their message out to the community. And over the last four years, it's grown into a national brand. We have Good Neighbor Podcasts in Denver, uh, Philadelphia, Atlanta, everywhere in between. And I'm the guy here in Tampa that gets to talk to folks like you. So with that being said, tell us a little bit about your green team. I'd love to, Mike. Uh, your green team started 2008. Uh, we actually started out as a mowing company. And we, uh, in about 2012, we started noticing there was, uh, our customers were asking for us to take over their lawn fertilization. So we also started that division. And between those two, now we pretty much do anything to a landscape. Uh, we mow fertilize, fix irrigation systems, mulch, uh, anything the, the property needs. But the only thing we don't do is uh, uh, we don't do any ins installs for landscaping or siding, but we will treat trees and shrubs, pest control in, in the house, outside the house. Uh, okay, so a um, couple things. Number one, um, residential mostly, or is there some commercial as well? It's both. Uh, our mix is probably 60-40, 60% residential, 40% commercial, and that's mainly in the mowing part. We do uh, TECO is a large account for us for mowing. Okay. That one I'm assuming would take up quite a bit. So do you right. guys um, – so what you're basically saying is the lawn has to be there. You're not going to come in and batco and rip up stuff and redo the actual landscape itself. You're, you guys are going to do the maintenance, and that's everything from the mowing to the fertilization and everything in between. You're exactly correct. Yes, we do not do the installation. Usually, that's going to be the builder when they, or once if you have issues, there's companies out there that you know are, are specific to siding. Yeah, I mean it's a tricky thing in Florida, especially because we're so below the water table that uh, if you dig, uh, you know, you could dig six inches too deep and, and have like uh, Ponce de Leon in your front yard. So, I mean, are you, um, what is your, like, where are you guys, do you have like a central office hub? Where are you guys located out of? Our, our main office is in Plant City. We're on Plant MLK. City. Yep. And, and what is your service area? We service, uh, we actually have two other locations, one in Sarasota and one in Orlando. Our market is pretty much, we'll do Hillsborough, Polk, Pasco, uh, don't do much in Pinellas. Nobody um, wants to cross those bridges. I, I get it. <laughs> Nobody wants to go across there. So Hillsborough, Pasco, uh, Polk, and down into Manatee, I'm assuming, in Sarasota County. Yes. Yep, and, and over to Orlando. Over to Orlando. So it's a, it's a pretty big footprint. How many crew, like how many teams are you running every day? Our, on our, we have 160 employees and we have about roughly 10,000 customers. Mowing, we have uh, 30 crews that go out on the road each day. Wow. Wow. I mean, from since 2008, that is a pretty, that's a pretty, I mean, how many did you start out with in 2008? Was it like? Uh, we started from zero. Uh, we zero. actually, yeah, we had nothing. We had to build from the ground up. We started, I think, the first year we probably had five crews. We've built it now to what we are today. It's almost a $15 million business. So. I love that. I mean, so so I got to ask you this question. I mean, um, were you always like the guy who liked to mow the lawn and decided to make it a career? Did you come out of a, like a corporate job and decided to do that? How do you go in 2000 like how do you start in 2008 and go hey i want to start this business you must have some serious business acumen to be able to develop this company so far up yeah it was a great question and when i was younger i i was one of the ones that loved mowing the lawn i used to always take care of the the grass actually spray the weeds it drove me crazy if we had weeds in the lawn that was me as a kid all and right all right never, so it's never, like in your blood since you were yes. a kid yeah, never didn't know it at the time. Who knew? But 
And then I got a job working for a lawn care company. I came from Michigan originally, and it was a national oh, company. Michigan? Yes. Oh, and so you, got, you got you got grass and snow. You had it all down that, down here, north, up there. You'd have like two seasons. You could do the snow removal in the winter, and then the the, the landscaping in the summer. Here, you only got the one long season. Yeah. Yes, I did do snow removal for 10 years. I could tell you that's not a fun business. No, to get man, up in the middle of the night and uh, snow plow. One snow I'll never forget. We got like 20 inches of snow. I was out plowing 24 hours straight. I was You know, it's funny. People from, from Florida don't quite understand. Like I, explaining to them, you had to go out and like pre-shovel. Like you couldn't wait until the storm was over and the 20 no. inches dropped or else you would never, you'd never get out. Like you had to go at two in the morning and get the first six to eight inches out of the way so that you could go out the next day and do the rest of it. People just never, I mean, I mean, listen, it's been a long time since I've had to do it, but it, I mean, just thinking about that just gave me like chills, like literally thinking about those days of doing that and being bundled up and the wind blowing sideways on your face. So how, how long have you been here from Michigan? I've been in Florida now 14 years. Okay. So, All right. Yeah. So, so wait, 14 years, so did... Well, I, no, actually, well, since 2008, so I didn't do the math correctly. Okay, yeah. so I was going to say, so all right, so you yeah. you guys came down here, got out of, you said, I'm getting the heck out of Michigan, you came down here with the family and started, you know, we started your green team right away. Yep. Good for you. Yep. So so you said you you were always the guy that, that, that you know, hated the, the lawn being messy and all that stuff. What makes you, were you doing this up there? Like, I mean, you said you're doing snow removal, but were you doing this as well up there? Yeah, I, I worked for a national com company and we were a lawn care company, did mowing, did snow plowing. So I learned the business from that and got my, you know, learned P&Ls and all that good stuff. And then hooked up with a partner here, Kevin Igo, who still works for us as YGT and him and I, built this company up from the start to what it is today so that's that's an amazing that's an amazing story can i ask you like i mean look landscaping and, and i don't i mean this i don't mean this like derogatory but it's pretty straightforward stuff i mean i'm not i'm one of those people that's the opposite i am not good at it in a sense that like if i like i can go and mow the lawn I, i'm good at that but i kind of get lazy so i like try to make designs out of the lawn and like i'm not one of those systematic lawn mowers and then when it comes to edging i screw that up like i'm always like i'm like daydreaming while i'm doing it and not paying attention to it is there like a misconception when people come to you like do they think it sh like should be like 1980 where it's like 50 bucks a week like, i mean what's the biggest misconception you run into when you're talking to new customers the biggest misconception is that all companies are the same. We're all doing the same thing that, you know, one spray company is just like any other spray company. And that's can be further from the truth. Uh, in a service industry, there's definitely different levels of service. Um, it's not just the products. It's also the service, how long you've been in business, the kind of employees that you have, you know, who owns the product or who owns the company. Uh, similar, I guess, the best one I can describe it, box stores over mom and pop hardware stores who's going to help you out better when you have a difficult question somebody in home depot or somebody in you know ace hardware uh so well you bring, up with a, us. You, you bring up a great point with that i mean you guys offer all these services and i mean i don't know the landscape pun intended of the landscaping industry in tampa or central florida like where you guys rank with, you know, 160 employees, I would think you're not the smallest, obviously, because anybody with a pickup truck and a lawnmower is those small guys. But there's got to be people bigger than you in the hierarchy. Like, how do you overcome that where not too big to be your your local landscaper type of thing? I mean, that like, what's the do the, do the same crews have the same route every week? Do they get to know the people? Is that how do you do that? Yes, we have employee and our employee, and that's one thing we pride ourselves on in the tenure of our employees. Yes, you go the, the mowing crews go out to the same properties each week, and it's the same people year after year. They get to know the customers. Uh, you know, they get Christmas presents from people because they've been doing it so long. People right. know who they are. And same thing with the spray work, the same uh, the lawn spray guys go out and the same they get to know their customers and they go in the same area 
And we it's a monthly service, so we're, we're out there each month. You get to know the lawn, you get to know the customer. So that's how we keep it local. And, you know, we're local. We're Our phones are answered locally. Our people are local. Our managers are local. That's a big our thing. Pe- people are all local. So you're dealing with a local business. So you start in 2008 with the mowing. What year do you start to add the spraying? We did. We started, it was 2012 that we started getting into Okay, that. so four years in. And then um, and then the irrigation, is that after that as well? That that's We started getting in that probably about four or five years ago, and that was just another thing customers were asking about it. And, you know, instead of sending it to other people to do the, you know, this is a good you know, revenue stream. Let's give it a try. Right. You know, right. Let's take care of our and customers. Out, obviously, yes, and it's you know, it, it it just ties in. It people like that one stop. That they don't have to find, you know, three different companies to do things. They can just call us, and we can take care of all their property needs. So, so is there a is there a new revenue stream that you guys are kicking around that's coming in 2024, 25? Have you thought of the next thing yet? Oh, actually, it's funny you ask that because it's an excellent question. Yes, it's we like are. Talking I've done this. It's like I've done this a couple of times. Yeah. But it yeah, it's, like, <laughs> it's like it's your business. So, yes, uh, yeah, we're going to be getting into termite. Uh, we've decided okay. to do that and offer that service. We're getting the licensing together, and that's something we'll be uh, starting this fall and starting that uh, service to complement our, you know, the pest control and the long. You're already service. doing, yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's got right. There's special licensing for the chemicals and stuff like that, right? You need that. Right. Um, so, I mean, that's kind of going after the big boys at, at that because that's like Terminex and like uh, Ar- Ar- Arrow is another. One. Those are some big guys out there. It's a huge market for that. Can I give you another one that might be? It's not going to be as big as that, but there's no chemical licensing involved with it. But there's a huge market for um, pet disposal of, you know, like, like poop pickup, you know, for lack of a better term. I mean, there's a bunch of businesses out there that do that. And you guys are already in the yard. It's like literally having one person on the crew that goes out and does that before you mow over it type of deal. Right. Uh, yeah. And adds another, I don't know, 20, 20 plus bucks a week per house. It's another yeah. easy one. So you could take that one. You could steal it, go with it. I'm giving you full license on uh, it. Uh, if it, it takes off, I'm going to be call you up and say thanks Mike. <laughs> appreciate that so so let me ask you this i mean if you're the guy who likes to mow the lawn what do you do for fun like when you are not like like me i used to when i when i owned a bigger house and some property I, I would like to put my headphones on and just kind of go walk the yard like i said i would get distracted it would kind of take me out of my head but that's what you do for your business i mean i, I know you're not out there pushing the mower every day but when you're not in the office and you're not managing these these 160 employees and all these crews going out, what do you like to do for fun? Two things. I like to go to the beach, enjoy going to either coast. St. Augustine's is one of our favorite cities. My wife and I like to go there, enjoy that atmosphere. And we like to go down to Fort Myers area for the beach. Obviously, after the, the hurricane. We yeah, it's tough. Do, yeah. Uh, we also, and then... You'll make you'll laugh at this one. I'm a big Disney f- person. Okay. Our season passes. Love going to Disney on the weekends. Enjoy that. Young kid at heart, I guess. Enjoy. Going All right. To so I, got a, I got a few questions. Number one, on the East Coast, I got to tell you, like I love Siesta Key, like I because it's just nice. The sand is so nice. Everybody knows it's there. It's very, you know, it's crazy. But I actually had a great time. I had never really been to the East Coast, but I went to Flagler Beach, not last year, the year before. And I actually liked the sand better. It was a little more granular and it was so quiet. It reminded me of like a sleepy Pacific Coast Highway type town. Loved Flagler Beach. I don't know if you've ever been there, but the big question I had about the Disney thing is, um, do, do you have kids? I mean, how old are your kids? My kids are all grown, so no. they're all grown. So you still yeah. like to go? Still what? Like um, to go. What? So what is your go-to ride? I mean, are you a big roller coaster guy? Like, do you hit, like hitting the, the roller coasters? Not anymore. You. Uh, this is a funny one. Carousel of Progress is one of my favorite rides at Magic Kingdom. Okay. It's the one that takes you through. It's really dated, and if anybody's ever gone on it, it's the one. There's never a line for it because no one goes on it. But it takes you through the history of America. And it starts like in the 20s, the 40s, 
and then they have the 60. And then the, the funniest thing, if you go on it, they have the future and it's really dated. So the future is actually not even what we do today. They haven't updated oh. it probably and what year 15, 20 years. Like, are they saying it's like 2050, but it's already stuff we've already done? They, they don't put a time on it, but they talk about like having – uh, car phones and oh, talking, oh wow. talking they might need TVs. to update that one they yes. might need to. so it's funny i, I do you know i'm not, like you said i might laugh at the disney thing i do like the amusement park thing very much i mean i grew up in the northeast in new jersey and we had great adventure when i was a kid but as i've gotten older my back is bad like i'm always like i like going on the roller coaster i love the adrenaline rush of it um but my, I'm always afraid the one bump, like I can't do like in, they used to have like the scream machine. It was like an old wooden roller coaster almost. And it would <laughs> rattle. Couldn't do that. I can't do that one anymore. I, mean, I get off of that and I'm like in traction. Um, but I do like some of those roller coasters. It just depends on the, on, you know, my back and how I'm feeling. But I, so do you mainly go to like Epcot? Like where, like, yeah, that's, Epcot. That's, like, yeah. Cause they have the festivals, like really enjoy the food and wine in the fall, and then they have plant in the in the spring here. They have uh, the flower and garden, which is you know, see the topiaries, which is fits in with. Uh, obviously, I like lawn care and I like hey, plants. Hey, 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 hey. So you know, I enjoy that seeing all the colors of the plants and enjoying that. So and then the different foods of the you walk around all the pavilions. They have different food from all different countries. So it's really it's a nice relaxing day. How many times, like how frequently when you say, you know, you got the season pass, I mean, even the season pass is expensive, but like how, cause then you gotta, it's not so much the pass, but then it's getting there, the parking, the, you know, all the food and all that stuff. But how many times a year and you're going with your wife or, you know, you go, who are you going with? And my kids too. So we'll all go as a family. Yeah. So they're grown, but we all go to Epcot just to walk the world's. Um, probably not as much as we, when I first moved down here, we went all the time probably 15 times a year. Probably wow. now we probably go like four or five times a year. All right. Well, still, that's you're getting your money's worth out of the pass for sure. Oh, yeah. And are the kids are the kids older, but are they still at home? Are they in college? Are they part of the family business? What are they doing? No, they're all they're all uh, they're all here. Two two of the three. Uh, one lives in Wesley Chapel. One lives over right by us here in New Tampa. And then my other son lives up in Chicago. Okay, so your office is based out of Plant City, but you're here in New Tampa where I am. Yes. All right, so we're right down the street from one another, even though we're recording this remotely. Um, one of the big questions I always like to ask entrepreneurs, and, and this could have been you know, the move in 08, it could have been COVID, it could have been the real estate market when people weren't paying their mortgage, let alone landscaping. There could be a whole bunch of stuff with this. But in this journey for your green team, where has there been a hardship or a challenge where you were like, you know what, I don't know, I don't know if we're going to get through this one. I mean, has there been that time? And then how did you get through it? And how did you come out the other side to get where you are right now? The biggest was when the the market downturn and and that was tough, especially you know in in the service industry, you know people are. Or cutting back on money, they're gonna instead of paying me to mow their lawn, they're gonna mow right. their own lawn because it's gonna save some money. Same thing with fertilization. So those were, you know, we had and that was right when we we're starting up. So we had to get through that. It got it, it got lean, and uh, it was just hanging on to our accounts, keeping and just constantly trying to get new accounts, and just you know. It was, you know, there was some tough times in there that we thought maybe we won't make it through this. Uh, but just staying on the path, taking care of your customers, taking care of your employees, and we got through it. And that's when we really, once you got through it, and then the bubble, you know, kind of crashed and then started back up. And we just started growing and growing. And then actually during COVID, it was one of our biggest growth spurts because people were staying home. And they wanted, they wanted their to take care of their yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's funny that in, in 08, well, like really starting in 08, like 2009, 2010, I was living in Atlanta and it was funny. It was kind of like it is like if you're in New Tampa, you know, if you go up to like 56 and go towards 301, the way there's just there's just new developments just popping up yeah. everywhere. Right. Like in that section, like right between Zephyr Hills and, and Wesley Chapel. And when I lived in Atlanta, that was happening. So like 
all of a sudden I move there and we buy this house as the market is just, it hadn't really bottomed out, but it was pretty close. Like we got in like right under the wire and then we bought this house and then all of a sudden you drive through these neighborhoods and there would just be like the green piping coming out for like sewer, like sewer pipage coming out on these lots and they would just sit there overgrown for like two to almost three years, like from late 08 to like into 2011 ish. And it was crazy. People weren't like, forget hiring a landscaper. They weren't worried about their lawn. They couldn't make their mortgage payments. So I, to get through something like that, when you get through it, when you get to the other side of that, does it make you feel like, you know what, listen, we just made it through this. We can, we can make it through anything. I mean, when COVID hits, you're probably a little nervous, but then things kind of work out. Does it give you that confidence as a business owner that, you know, nothing's going to break us at this point. We, we, you know, we're, we're doing the right thing and we're working hard. Yeah. It gives you the confidence. And that's one of the reasons we got into lawn fertilization. Like we got through this and, you know, things are turning around. We can get through that. We can get, let's start this up and see what can happen. And yeah. that kind of mentality as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, uh, you're right. You get a confidence. You get a like, hey, if I can do that, I can do anything. Let's try it. And and you try it and good things happen. So it's you not know, like some things you try don't work out or don't work out as good as you, you thought they were going to. But, they, you know, you've got to give it a try. And, and good, all the good things that have happened to us, uh, you know, we all started from zero. So it's that old saying, you know, you miss 100 percent of the shots that you don't take. You know, I had this, I, you know, because I do marketing and that's part of what I do. I, I just put out this video recently and talked about, you know, I was in a meeting when I was in my corporate career and I was in a meeting with all these people that I didn't really feel like I was on the same level as them. And I sat there for weeks and didn't say anything. And then finally, one day they were talking about something and I, I kind of like raised my hand and said, have you guys ever thought about doing it like this? And it was like they all were like annoyed with me that I even raised my hand. But then after I asked the question, it was like you could see like light bulbs go off around the room and they were like, oh, we never did think of doing that. And and then they ended up changing this whole process and it saved the company hundreds of thousands of dollars. And it was like you being in that moment, not knowing, should I raise my hand? Are they going to turn around and hiss at me? Same thing with, you know, you get through those things. Now you don't have that 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 uh, lack of confidence. Now it's like, listen, we can roll out you know, a spray in lawns. We can roll out irrigation. You know, we can actually bring in termite stuff. The next step, is, but it's doing it in a smart way that as an entrepreneur, like, look, you can't just, like the, the expression go big or go home doesn't work when you're an entrepreneur because you don't want to go home. You, you want to keep the business going. So you got to right. kind of test it and go from there. So with the termite stuff, do you have, how do you roll out that? Like, because you have such a wide footprint, do you pick a section and say, we're just going to roll it out here to get started and see how it takes? Or do you roll it out all the way out? We're going to roll it out just in the Tampa market. And that's where we're going to concentrate on. And then if it takes off like we think, then we'll go down to Sarasota and Orlando right. too. But right. just we're going to stay in with our customer base first, start with that. And then it's going to be, it's the product is called Centricon. It's bait stations. Yep. That's what we had in Georgia too. Like the the, yeah. the the you drill like you put a hole in the ground around the house, right. you put the feeder, the whatever the, the termite food in there, and it kind of brings into that. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yep. That's cool. That's really yep. cool. So as we start to wrap this up, Tom, what is the one thing? Like if people are listening to this, like I know what I've taken from what you've said, but what's the one thing you want to convey to the listener? Like why we need to do business with your green team over the I don't know, thousand other different real uh, uh, landscape people out there that work on your property. And the biggest is you're getting what, what you get with us. We're not, you know, in like I said, there's a lot of people out there, but not of them. All of them are insured. I can tell you, all of our employees go through background checks, MVR checks. So you're these are people that are coming to your home. You're trusting to be on your property each week. So it's kind of important that you kind of know what kind of individual is coming out to your property and that's going to be walking around your home. So that's the kind of people we hire and we do that as an expense. And yes, it makes hiring more difficult, but we take it seriously. And not every company is the same. And we take pride in what we do. That's why we've grown and we can handle 
there's a lot of companies that do one or some of these things, but not all these things. And we can, you know, mow your lawn, fertilize your lawn, take care of your trees and shrubs, trim them, mulch them, ir fix your irrigation, you know, anything that you need. So I think, and, and we're local. We're not, and we're going to, you're going to talk to somebody when you call our phone number. You're not going to be talking to somebody in a foreign country or you're going to get an answer machine. You're going to be talking to a person. So, so it, you bring up a great point and that is really as an entrepreneur and having done this for a while and I speak to hundreds and hundreds of business owners every single week, it, taking painstakingly taking the, the time and effort to go out and find staff period lately in the past since COVID really finding people to staff a business is difficult. I've talked to countless number of uh, home service companies to say, look, I just can't get enough staff to grow my business. Not only are you guys getting the staff, but then you are putting them through the process to make sure they're at the, you know, the, your green team level to be able to go to people's homes, which is, it's an amazing feat to do that should be commended and definitely should be uh, earning your pay or earning people's patronage from that alone. But what is the best way if someone right now is sitting here going, I need to, you know, I need to get my lawn cleaned up. It's a mess. It's summertime. We need to fix it up. We need to get these services in here. What's the best way to get a hold of you guys? The best way we're on, you know, on the web, you can look us up, yourgreenteam.com. And you, it has all our phone numbers, different locations. You can click on them. If you're on your phone, it'll, you can dial right from your phone. If you click on that phone number, you'll get our office and you can talk to our sales reps, our sales manager, my sales manager is Donato. He'd love to talk to you uh, and, and get you taken care of. Uh, we're right in Plant City. If you want to stop by the office, we're at 902 West MLK, Plant City. Uh, and our phone number is on the, on the, on the website, but it's 877-665-0901. So, folks, if you're out there, you're listening to this, and you are looking for a, you know, a business that has stood the test of time, 16 years, growing from one lawnmower into a fleet of 160-plus employees all over Central Florida, from Sarasota to Spring Hill to Orlando, everywhere in between. You definitely need to reach out to your green team. Tom and his team will give you the personal attention that your, your property needs. It's your biggest investment that you're going to own. You want to make sure it looks good. You're going to call and speak to Donato. He's obviously just waiting by the phone, waiting for you to call and talk to him. The number is 877-665-0901 or go to yourgreenteam.com and find the location nearest you and reach out to these guys. Tom, thank you so much for being a good neighbor. Thank you so much for being a part of the Good Neighbor Podcast today. Thanks, Mike. Thanks for all the information. Thanks for the opportunity to talk. Have a great day. You too. Thanks for listening to the Good Neighbor Podcast Pasco. To nominate your favorite local businesses to be featured on the show, go to gnppasco.com. That's gnppasco.com or call 813 922 3610.